is you have these people who are successful in the private industry saying, why would I run for an office to make less money, have less free time, and have my name directly in mud? I'm perfectly happy being successful where I am. And so what we have left are the people who got spit out the bottom of the private industry, who weren't able to make it. And they look around and they say, well, geez, this isn't working very well. What else can I do? I can run for government. I can be a part of that system. And those are the people that we end up having make the decision if those who can don't. So those who can must. Now, the system of entitlements that we have created, it creates a situation in which those people are disincentivized. I guess that's a word. Is that a word? Disincentivized? All right. If I used it, you guys know what it meant. I consider it a word. Uh, but they lack the incentive to go out there and to work for themselves. I mean, we can sit around all we want, and we can complain about people who are taking advantage of the system. I hear it all the time. Uh, I had somebody I talked to yesterday that was uh, in, appeared to be in great physical condition, had a great conversation with me, all these types of things. Uh, and it was in a situation where they were retaining me to do some work for them. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with this person. You can tell when there's something wrong with somebody. And they told me, you know, I'm going to have trouble paying you because I, all I get right now is my disability. And this was a 30-year-old, perfectly healthy person. All I get is my disability. And I probably can't pay you until I get my tax refund. Are you kidding me? Your tax refund? I mean, that kind of stuff just eats me up. And it makes me passionate about entitlement. Now we can sit in here right now and we can talk about this issue of entitlement. And I think all of us can agree that it needs to happen. We need to start teaching men to fish rather than giving men to fish. But it won't happen until we can't make those people earn it until you guys, and that's why you're here today, make your elected officials earn it. Amen. They have to earn it as well. They have to earn your vote. You have to be educated about who you're voting for. You have to make sure that you're putting people into the seats who have the courage or convictions to do what's right. And all too often, we have people in office who want to get up and want to talk about these kind of things. Uh, quite frankly, they don't even want to talk about this. That's why we don't hear enough about it. Because it's tough. It's tough to tell people who have their hand out that it's no longer going to be filled with government subsidies. Uh, you look at history about how the systems have worked in the past, how government systems have worked in the past, and you talk about the Greeks and the Romans who tried to do things like this. Now, they started off with very good systems. In fact, they started off with republics which is make no mistake about it, what we have, they let slip into a democracy. And it's a very, very important distinction between a republic and a democracy. The difference is in a democracy, the people actually have the power directly in their hands. The republic is a representative form. And the Greeks were the first to recognize that democracy can never be a permanent form of government. And that's what our founding fathers knew when they gave us a republic. And I have this debate with people all the time about whether we have a republic or a democracy. And if you need proof, we just stood up and we pledged allegiance to that flag and to the republic for which it stands. That's, right. that's what we have as a republic. But the Greeks recognized early on that it could never be a permanent form of government because in a democracy, when you put the power directly in the hands of the people, and the decisions are made by the elected officials. It doesn't take long for the people to realize that they can elect the official that will give them the most gifts out of the public coffers. And when they're electing the officials that give them the most gifts out of the public coffers, it doesn't take long for those public coffers to run dry. And so what we have now, we have, quite frankly, politicians who are out there telling people, I will give you the most gifts out of the public coffers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the ultimate demise of our system. We can talk about all the other problems you want. We can talk about the education reform, all the other things, the, the comprehensive energy reform. Those types of things that need to happen, and they all do. But until we can make sure that people who are willing to get up every day, to work hard, to set the example that's necessary, to go out and be, be creative, have original ideas, get involved in our system, and actually work to make a dollar, until we can make sure that that is rewarded, and that the people who would wallow in laziness and apathy and not be a part of this system have to be have to realize that they just can't make it doing that any longer. Until we realize that, and until we elect people who have the courage or the convictions to make that happen, then none of those other things can be addressed, and none of those things are protected in our country. And that's that's the, the very real problem that we're facing right now. And so my message to you would be this: uh, it, it, it's very simple. Um, elect people. Get out there and educate yourself. Make them 
earn your vote. They need to earn it because not only do you know that they are telling you the right things, but they will do the right things. The time for lip service, ladies and gentlemen, is over. And I don't want to be apocalyptic about this because this is a great country and we have found uh, ways time and time again to be resilient and to bounce back. And I'm confident that we are in one of those times now and we will find a way to be resilient and we will bounce back. But we have to earn it. We have to go out there and we have to make sure that we are protecting the rights that those people who die for this country have given us. Freedom is not free. It's not even cheap. It's expensive. And you have to take the time to educate yourself, to be ready to get out there and to, to vote for people who will not put, not just be giving gifts out, but who will be doing the right thing for this country. And that's not a very easy thing to do. Now with that said, uh, I hope you give some time to, to Jim Lucas, who you're about to hear from, running for uh, the state representative city in District 69, a very, very qualified candidate, somebody who I can promise you shares these views, and is ready to stand up in the line of battle and make sure that he casts the tough votes so that we can get the right thing done here in the state of Indiana. And I know you guys, uh, we're here to hear about more national issues, but I can tell you this, the state of Indiana is doing a pretty good job. And it's, you look at the state of Indiana compared to other states, and it's because we're making the tough decisions. Uh, the last two sessions we were in up there, they were not easy sessions. We had people walking out who wouldn't show up to their jobs. We had people who wanted to come back and spread, I won't even say half-truths, they wanted to spread non-truths about the, the policies that they were encouraging. But we stood up and made the right decisions, and now you see the result. Now we need to take that message to the national level. Indiana is a leader now. Indiana has to bring the country along with them and make sure that our country stops operating in red, stops operating in red, and starts operating in black, just like the state of Indiana is. <laughs> Entitlement reform, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't get enough attention. It doesn't get enough attention because it's a very difficult topic to talk about. And it doesn't get that attention because, quite frankly, your politicians, a lot of them, uh, have a very, very long fuse for political correctness. In fact, that's one of the things that they want to address first. They want to make sure they're politically correct. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was just stand up and do what's right and let the political consequences shake out for themselves. We have to elect people who do that. But the only way we can do it is if you guys educate yourself and, and respect those people and stand up for them and help them, just like you're doing right now for Richard Murdoch. And, uh, what you can do to help is not just stop here, but get out and talk to other people. Spread the message. I know you've heard it a million times, but it's never been more important than it is right now. So get out, spread the message, talk to people, make sure that we elect conservative candidates who mean it and who are willing to earn it. And that's my message to you today. With that, I give you Jim Lucas. Thank you very much for your time.